The Commonwealth has accused Karen Reed of striking her boyfriend, Boston police officer, John O'Keefe, with her car after a night of drinking and leaving him in the snow to die. The defense is saying, as they said in their opening statement, that Karen Reed was framed and this is all a cover up. It's been a busy morning. Now at the morning break of day 13 of the Commonwealth versus Karen Reed, the morning started out with the defense putting on the record again their objection over the court allowing Allison McCabe to get into a brief, and it was fairly brief testimony about suffering any harassment online or in connection with this case, things that have been said in connection with this case. She started to talk about her and about Colin Albert, but that was objected to and then shut down by the court. It was fairly brief. The defense made their motion saying that it was prejudicial to their case and made a thorough record about why they don't believe they opened the door for that information to come in. We are now partway through the cross-examination of Colin Albert, and the defense is arguing that the prosecution has opened the door for two what look like Snapchat videos, they could be Instagram videos, but two videos that seem to come from social media we don't know where because they never said. In the cross-examination of Colin Albert, the defense brought in a first a photo that is not marked in evidence but was shown to Colin Albert as part of his cross-examination where he is the ring bearer at the wedding of Trooper Proctor's sister. He said about some 10 years ago. And again, I don't think it goes to anything this witness has done wrong, but it goes again to how closely connected these families are and how interwoven Trooper Proctor is with everyone involved or connected to the location of 34 Fairview, which is a huge problem for this investigation because it seems that Trooper Proctor should not be investigating this case at all. But I think that's one of the things in this case that's uh, actually fairly clear. How he ended up investigating the case, less clear to me. Then we got into photos of Colin Albert from an event. It's unclear what type of event, but that was from February 26th, where he very clearly has scraped the top of his knuckles and they look like they are scabbed over and healing. When asked what happened, and mind you, throughout Colin Albert's testimony, he does not know, he does not remember, he does not recall. He very clearly recalls that he had slipped on some ice and had something in his left hand, and then when he fell with his right hand, he fell on the tops of his knuckles, and that is how he stopped himself from falling and that is how he scratched the tops of his knuckles which is just one of the oddest things i have ever heard it just doesn't make any sense at all that the tops of his knuckles are scabbed over because he caught himself on a driveway fist first and didn't do any other damage to his knuckles his wrist and they weren't split they are scraped they are scabbed over not split knuckles scabbed then it comes up that at a hearing and it seems like this was during the federal grand jury he was questioned about the fact that when he showed up to that federal grand jury in july of 2023 that he had scraped or split knuckles at that hearing and was asked about it at that hearing so then the defense started to ask how often he fights and he's like i've never been in a fight in my life and that started a colloquy of you've never been in a fight in your life and that's where we got into the knuckles and he's like well i've punched a bag but i've never boxed and then the jury was excused and we got into a voir dire again a process where the witness is questioned outside the presence of the jury to see what evidence will be allowed in or kept out after the witnesses questioned about it and was confronted with those two videos that seem to have come from social media, though nobody has made clear which social media, where he is telling someone to pull up because he's going to beat their ass. Alan Jackson loved getting to do this questioning on this voir dire. You could hear it in his voice where he's like, you didn't say that. You say I'm going to beat your fucking ass. 
it seemed that the videos were directed at advantage which this witness described as a club hockey team so i don't know why he is seemingly to me under the influence threatening a, a, an ice hockey team that does not seem like it's going to go well but he said they were texting him and calling him a pussy so that's where we're at when we get to the break as to whether these videos will come in whether or not this witness has ever been in a fight and the court is going to try to i imagine rein this in from being a side quest but if this witness is leaving the impression that he has never been in a fight in his life which is what he said on the stand but at least two occasions he has knuckles that are clearly scabbed over on only his right hand then can he be impeached on that saying okay but in this video you're clearly threatening people to be in a fight and you're telling me you've never been in a fight if the defense opened the door to the testimony about the internet harassment of Allison McCabe, it would seem that the prosecution asking Colin Albert in photos right after January 28th, 29th, 2022, and saying, do you have any scratches or scrapes? Do you have any injuries? It seems to me that the prosecution asking about those injuries would open the door to this line of questioning. At the end of the half day, day 13, we are in the middle, it seems, of the direct examination, maybe towards the end, the direct examination of Matt McCabe, husband of Jen McCabe, brother-in-law of the homeowners at 34 Fairview, because his wife is sisters with Nicole Albert, married to Brian Albert. Hopefully the connectedness is getting a little bit easier as it is being repeated over and over and over again the whole beginning of this testimony uh was not super needed then we got into the time leading up to john and karen arriving at 34 fairview this is the first witness who we have heard testimony from that was in the car while the conversation was going on between jen mccabe and john o'keefe as john o'keefe and karen were heading to 34 fairview where they had not been before so asking where are we going asking for directions and then matt mccabe testified that he saw a dark suv outside of 34 fairview nearer to where the mailbox was then down by the flagpole then down by the trees by like the neighbor's house or the end of the property line he also said at one point his attention was drawn outside when julie nagel was going outside to talk to her brother and at that point he saw a vehicle back by the driveway, a Jeep by the mailbox, and then another dark SUV. He testified that he never saw lights on inside that SUV, but he kept wondering, well, where is John and why haven't they come in yet? And kept checking outside and said that period of time where the dark SUV was outside was like 12 to 15 minutes that he was checking and then the SUV left and he was like, okay, but, no one went to check and we know that there was communication between Jen McCabe at some point and John O'Keefe's cell phone. I don't think John O'Keefe responded to that, but we haven't gotten all the way into that yet. It's hearsay and there were objections getting into that. At the end of the cross-examination of Colin Albert, we did see the videos that the judge was going to rule on before the break. Both of those came in and he was cross-examined on them. There was a brief redirect and it seems that the beef with the hockey team was over girls talking to the hockey team and then his friends were salty about it. That was the testimony that came in. At the end of day 13, I still have a lot of questions multiple witnesses talk about julie nagel's brother showing up the witnesses all in that ford f-150 and brian albert jr and julie nagel none of them mention the jeep being there that is presumably the jeep that belongs to brian higgins but brian albert senior and nicole indicate that brian higgins got there at the same time they did and then parked this witness says they see a jeep there are so many things in controversy that it's hard to actually know what we know. That it was snowing, that there was a light dusting of snow, that the Canton basketball team lost their varsity basketball game, that everybody went to the waterfall at some point and left 
all were gone before 1217. And after that, everything is very, very confusing. It's very confusing to me that this witness kept looking outside like, why haven't they come in yet? And then the curiosity all just stops. Uh, okay. But then apparently one of the girls getting driven home in Matt McCabe's car, Julie Nagel, said, hey, don't you guys see something? Did I see something in the yard? And knowing now that they were looking for John O'Keefe, and saw the SUV, that doesn't raise any curiosity at all. I have so many questions. And then the judge ends promptly for lunch. So the last testimony before they went to sidebar and broke from lunch is of Matt McCabe saying, how did you wake up on the morning of January 29th? Or at some point, did you sort of wake up on the morning of January 29th? And he said, I woke up to screaming in my bedroom. And that's where we ended day 13 of the Commonwealth versus Karen Reed. I imagine on Friday, we will finally get to the awaited testimony of Jen McCabe. For deep dives into the stories that I covered here, you can find them on my YouTube channel at The Emily D. Baker and The Emily Show Podcast. I stream every Tuesday and Thursday. The podcast goes live on Wednesdays. And if you want to stay in the loop with everything I'm doing, receive the fastest notifications out there and get more Law Nerd community, join me at lawnerdapp.com, our free app for iOS and Android. 